But that's how you start an episode. Let's get into underwear. To perverts. Only to perverts? <laughs> Uh-oh. Put the catch. Not this underwear, though. That titillated no one. <laughs> get dressed. He was trying to get dressed. What did you think he was doing? Oh, like, what are the other explanations? Why would you assume the worst right out of the gate? <laughs> oh no, judging a man for his underwear. That's rough, buddy. Stand up for our rights. <laughs> Ishigami. We have the right to wear whatever. Wow. That's not true, though. Let's not judge in response to judgment. You know what? I'm not even sure that I know what that is. And let me guess who among the cast wears boxer briefs. Like a wager on this one. A wild Irwin Smith-like gamble. Does it really matter? Not that anyone asks. Please skip this part if you do not want to hear about my underwear. <laughs> I promise it won't be weird. Or than it already is. I feel like I go back and forth. I don't think there's one right answer. I've never had, like, underwear grief. I feel like girl underwear is a lot more interesting. <laughs> And I'm not just saying that because I'm a heterosexual guy. I just mean, there's a lot more variety. As I think it's just generally the case with women's clothing. Kaguya wants to dress him. No innuendo here. Or is there? My dad's a really big fan of Darjeeling tea randomly. Kaguya, you are so oblivious. Don't do that. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Right, he'll just drop him for you. Man, she's... <laughs> I don't know, man. Am I crazy? I, like, the longer this show goes on, the more I worry for Kaguya. In the beginning, it was like this cute back-and-forth spat, and they were playing a game. She just feels isolated. Maybe he's kind of just living his life and crushing it. Kaguya's losing her stuff over here by herself. And I'm gonna say something that might be super controversial here. I think her worst fears are correct. I don't think she's good enough for Miyuki. I want to be really clear on this. I think part of her insecurity is the worry that she's not high enough value to get what she wants and to get someone who is as good and solid as Miyuki. And what's sad about that is that in a way she's right, but not because of who she is internally, but because of the way she's approaching things. She's caught in this terrible cycle of needing Miyuki to reclaim lost value, but discarding or ignoring the value she already has in that pursuit. At her core, Kaguya is a sweet, girl who's very intelligent, very capable, but the way she sort of lives her day to day, she kind of dispenses with the warmth for winning because she doesn't believe she can win through warmth. It's like this backwards approach where it's just largely wrong. It's kind of skew. I think one of the most telling signs of that is the way she views Chika with animosity at times. I know that's partly played for comedy, but if we're treating that as actual feelings that she has, to me that just shows that the perspectives are wrong. Chika's not a threat. You know, she's your greatest friend. I'm curious and not a little bit fearful about how this is going to get resolved because if she just gets Miyuki this way, there's going to be something unsatisfying about that. And also, I think treating her as a real person, dangerous for her and in, in her future, because like I said before, it will not make her happy because Miyuki is a band-aid at, at the end of the day. People who are great romantic partners are people who challenge us to grow and, and be better versions of ourselves. But that growth and better version of ourselves thing is a prerequisite to that being a healthy thing. If they're seen as sort of a, you know, a lifeboat to grab onto in time of you know emotional drowning it doesn't necessarily fix the underlying problem it kind of creates new ones i mean there are of course exceptions to that i mean sometimes you just need stability long enough to get your bearings and miyuki could be that for her but at the end of the day one way or the other it's gonna have to be about kaguya for kaguya eventually and perhaps it's always been there but for some reason in recent episodes in season two if that's become more highlighted for me maybe because of the fact that miyuki seems to be maturing kaguya seems to be going in the other direction in some key ways not that this episode is the the one to you know, vent those fears. This is more of a fun one about underwear. No, I just can't unsee it. I can't unsee the loneliness. Come on, Kaguya. I'm rooting for you. At least she didn't spill it on his crotch. My god, that would have been awful. <laughs> just, you know, normal conversation. Funny, ask questions and we get an answer. Maybe not the answer you want. A little late there. What? Really? A conclusion that no one has ever come to. See, he has already determined his tastes. This is way ahead 
way ahead of where you guys are. Yeah. And he just stabs himself. When you're losing a game that no one is even playing anyway. I don't know. This is... yeah, no. They're just totally on the page. In so many ways. I'm realizing I didn't know the terminology for underwear, despite being someone who wears them. That's what box briefs are, got it. Hey, it's my new favorite character. Oh no. Oh no. Maybe she would have been better off not joining the student council. She entered a world. That would not have helped you, really, though. Oh no, everyone's turning on him. <laughs> Poor innocent Eno, caught up in their weird world, struck by one of their rogue arrows, just like the intro predicted. Everyone lost. Everyone lost. Oh no, he's insecure about it now. Don't give him any security about the underwear he wears. There's nothing wrong with it. An immediate resolution. Kukuya wants to make him secrete them! What could you secrete that... okay. Here are my hands. Oh, this is... Hand massage? Sort of in between. <laughs> it's a massage, but it's, you know, it's hands. You'd be nice, though. Hand massages are under underrated. Oxytocin. Ah, she wants him to secrete oxytocin? Oh, he's really fixated on this idea. Don't give in to peer pressure, Kaguya. I feel like hugs also do that. Affection formation. <laughs> right away. You are a smart man, Miyuki. Shaba shaba shaba. <laughs> this is one of my favorite themes of the whole show. There's a thin line, right? I don't know, some people like that. I have a really weird massage story that I probably shouldn't tell. I once went to Thailand with my ex-girlfriend and she wanted to get a massage. And so we went into a room together and, you know, a young petite girl, um, came in to do her massage, and then my masseuse came in who was a different kind of lady. But the problem was, when my girlfriend was lying on her stomach and couldn't see us, she was sort of suggesting that we take the massage further through pantomimes, and I gestured to say no thank you, and I could tell that for some reason that made her really angry. I, maybe that it was just that kind of place, and that's how she earned her money, I don't know, but she gave me a revenge massage. I mean, it was not that she was being rough, it's like she was assaulting me, but I was kind of paralyzed. It was such a bizarre experience. I just kind of, in endured it, and I was in pain for a solid three days after that relaxing massage. A much better, less traumatic story on my second date with my current girlfriend. She gave me a massage that included a hand massage on the Staten Island Ferry, which at that point was exactly like this. It was just, you know, sort of our first physical contact. And when you're really into someone and feel the way I felt on that date, even small things like that can feel huge. So I get how this could be a big deal for them, even if it's, you know, painful at, at times. <laughs> But are we getting oxytocin out of it? That's sort of the point. Is he just that fragile? Oh no, she's giving herself oxytocin. Whoops. Tell us about your parents, Kaguya. <laughs> No one filled Ino in, huh? Welcome to the student council. Gosh. <laughs> Why is she taking his belt off, though, for a hand massage? Welcome to the student council. <laughs> oh no. What was I saying about there being no innuendo? At least he's not alone in it this time. He looks real loose right now. Alright, who made little little K cry? This is a fruits basket. Shirogani Miyuki wants to make her read. So it is fruits basket. <laughs> 
Yeah, you gotta, gotta <clears throat> balance out the manliness by doing some punching, bro. <laughs> Punch it out. Get rid of those emotions. <laughs> There's no shame in that, man. A good story is a good story. Anything that makes you feel. I like how open he is about it. That's what you think. That's what you think. But then the ending just comes together more beautifully than you ever could have expected, and you understand the real meaning of God's banquet. The timing is kind of funny, though, because I was just thinking the other day, since my girlfriend and I are about to celebrate our one-year anniversary, some of the early clue that form for me, which is a feeling of wanting to be really giving to her. And it occurred to me that right before I met her, I'd watched a Korean reality show called Heart Signal. And on that show, I was really impressed by the behavior and, and sort of devotion and attitude of some of the guys towards the, the girls they like. And I remember thinking when I watched it, you know, I'd kind of like to be more like that. And I think in a way that show set the stage for meeting my girlfriend and who I showed up as. So for me, that's a personal example of the very thing they're talking about, where actually consuming sort of romantic or relationship themed media can be surprisingly impactful at least for me that's true I, I sort of don't like it when i feel like they're pulling artificially at my heartstrings oh and there we go <laughs> the tears just start flowing already what is it called i'll have it mild today not really what i was expecting how does kaguya react to it will she cry <laughs> Speaking of Miyuki not scheming. Curious to see her reaction. A bunch of ways it could go. That's one of them. You should just do it because your friends are that into it. Ooh. Of course. Let me guess, he's also rich. Oh, Lord. That's the other one. From my illness. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I honestly deserve this. Welcome to the student council. And she got anorexia. But then how does she eat the mild curry? I uh, just assumed it was about curry from the title. I'm getting the story. It is about curry. I'll have it mild. And roll credits. That's how I feel when my friends talk about Naruto. I'm in a group chat with three Naruto fans. Did she actually read it? I hope that comes back around. I, I do genuinely want to see her reaction. All right, well, I got a little bit heavy <laughs> early in the episode because I genuinely am worried for Kaguya, but this was sort of a return to form in a way. Maybe we never departed from form at all. Maybe it's just me and my craziness, but this was at least fun for the group. The Eno gag is kind of great, although I would like her to be there, at least for one of the episodes. At this rate, she's never going to participate in even one meeting. Wait, hold up. There's a lot of time left in this episode. What is what is happening? This is going to be a super long end credit scene. I thought that felt short. What's this long end credit scene going to be about? Is this like a fanfic? She looks different. They all look different. Manga style? Perhaps? I'm super handsome and charming. Also, I'm rich and I have anorexia. Don't eat anything the principal gives you. It's a, it's a plot. Pudding. <laughs> the way he said pudding, though. Set my heart aflutter. <laughs> This is among his myth. Girly Kakuya wants to be confessed to an alternate universe. This is pretty genius as an end credit scene. And we get a, a, a bonus opening. <laughs> It'd be sort of terrible if I like this more than the original opening, right? I don't know, it's catchy. <laughs> what does that sound effect? <laughs> and again. Yugi did it better though. Is this like a shoujo manga parroting its own genre? Oh, just go with it. Go with Girly Kaguya. This principle. Dude's night out! <laughs> Imagine. I don't know, Kaguya. That is, a, that is a skill. <laughs> oh, we got some feelings for, for him now. <laughs> it's hard to admit that, but it takes real honesty. <laughs> some of these lines are great. 
they're just so quotable. Shall I show you the romance of flightless birds? I admit your fish knowledge surpasses mine. I feel like they sell tickets there. It's not like they're going to be sold out. It's the aquarium. You can go and all, all three of you could to be together. Oh, oh no, the oh, sound effect overload. And sumo out of nowhere. This is a real non sequitur, the sumo talk. This is such a metaphor for Chika. Everyone else is engaged in a struggle. She's enjoying pudding. That tells a story, doesn't it? A little close there. Things that work in anime but are risky in real life, like Kabadon. There's no pudding left. She ate it all. This really is a fantasy, isn't it? Oh, a little forceful, but again, things that work in anime. <laughs> it all depends on how much you like the person, I guess. What about the fish? She's already there. <laughs> She's in her heart and mind. I didn't actually expect her to say that, but okay. The aquarium was here, indeed. They did end up going together. Yeah, why not? Bros, day out. You gotta hang out with your bros sometimes too. Can't all be Kaguya and girls. That skit was really well done. I think it's one of my favorite standalone skits of the whole show so far. It, it was just hilarious from the sound effects to the parody of the genre. Some of the lines are just instant classics in my opinion. I admit your knowledge of fish is greater than mine. That must have been hard for him to say out loud, given how much he values fish knowledge.